Yo. What's up? It's your boy Tello. How you guys doing today? Is everybody alright out there? You chilling? Cause I'm not. Motherfuckers are jumping me out here in Ultra Rack Mountains, man. I'm just trying to fish, bro. Y'all gotta leave me alone, dude. I had a druid try to jump me three times, and I killed him three times, and on the fourth time, he just waved to me and ran away. I gotta give that man respect. Then I saw him trying to jump another paladin, and I had to kill him. It was a damn shame. And then I helped a shaman level 36 horde kill, uh, kill an elite. That was pretty fun. That was a cool amigo right there. That's a cool dude. I woke up freezing today, by the way. Like, straight up, like... Editor, you better fucking full camera right now. I'll kill you. However, he's all right, guys. Don't worry. He bought me this, actually. Look at this. Look at the drip. The cloak. I'm always cozy, bro. I'm always cozy, dude. This this thing looks like... It's bigger than me, bro. It's bigger than me. This is crazy. It feels like I'm in Red Dead Redemption. Red Dead Redemption. However, though, um, yeah, dude. I woke up freezing. My mom opened my window, I guess, and she always does it there. Like, late at night, like, I'll be in bed, and she's like, Oh, you gotta open the window. She's like, You gotta open the window. And I'm like, You fucking miserable. I love her, though. That's my mama, you know? However, she opens the window, I wake up in the morning, like, ah, Freezing. You ever get the jitter when you're out of the bed? You're like, ah, Why is it so fucking cold? I'm not waking up like The Undertaker. However, lock it in. That's not what the video is about today. I need some water. I'm choking. Lock it in. Oh, yes. This is a decent mineral water indeed. Bless that and put it right by the fountain of the cathedral. However, today we're talking about um, nightmare incursions a little bit more. Because I'm kind of curious on what's going to happen from there. So, spoiler alert, if you don't want to see it, there'll be links in the video below. You know the deal. Just go click the fucking links. Come on now, lock it in. However, um, yeah, we're talking about that. We're talking about how I think a lot of enchanters, alchemists, herbalists, and... Profession people overall, uh, I think those ones I said, though, in the beginning, they're going to be making more bank than anybody. Um, but overall, though, there is a lot of cool items that are going to be coming out of the Nightmare Incursions. Um, and I think it's going to be really fun um, when it comes to, you know, a lot of, like, level 25s all the way up to level 50 being able to do these Nightmare Incursions. And I'm kind of curious, like, how it's going to work. Like, do you go in there by yourself? Do you go in with a group of five, a group of ten? I mean, is there quests in there? What kind of enemies are we going to see? Like, is there, like, a like a boss in there? Like, an open-world boss or something? You know, where we're all in there and there's Horde and Alliance? Like, how is this going to go down? Is there, like, factions? Is there PvP areas within them? I have no fucking idea. Like, my mind's kind of blown about this. And I've been theory crafting kind of, like, all night. I was up to, like, four or five in the morning chilling in Ironforge. But, <laughs> however, it's kind of intriguing. And I'm very curious to see what's going to happen happen overall with it i like the fact that they're adding a lot of new items which we're not going to talk about every single item on this list because dude there's like a fuck ton of them however um the ones i will highlight though i think it's cool that there's a new epic staff um i think there's some fun items like this emerald ring like enter the dream state of a targeted friend there's a lot of like fun based items that they're adding i have no fucking idea what they're for um but the ones i want to like showcase mainly is the Roar of the Dream. 66 spell damage for 10 seconds for an unequip effect with 14 stam. That's pretty juicy. 14 stam, especially for PvP. They're very nice, basing it off a of fucking ring. Um, and also Roar of the Guardian. 10 stam, but AP on use effect for 20 seconds for 70 attack power with only a 5 minute cooldown. That's not too bad overall. I mean, it could be like a 3 minute cooldown to make it a little better if people would like to see, you know, that AP coming more often. But I think 5 minutes is not too bad overall. That, that goes by pretty quick. Um, but yeah, there is a lot of cool based items in here that... Um, I'm very intrigued about to see what's going to happen. I mean, like, look at this one. Seed of Renewal. This one sounds crazy. Chance to embed a seed into an enemy humanoid's beast or dragonkin hit by your abilities or spells. If the creature is slain within 30 seconds of the seed being embedded, a healing blossom will grow from its corpse. Proc chance 40% with a two-minute cooldown. And this healing blossom, I assume, is an AoE-wide heal? Maybe for you and your party? I have no fucking idea, but... It's a lot of crazy based abilities on this list with different variety of items. Of course, we're going over like, you know, the PvP stuff as we went over, um, you know, yesterday's video. But I am liking the fact that there are so many cool, unique looking um, PvP items that are there to also help 
with uh, catch-up mechanics for people to get this gear, go into dungeons, go into PvP, or even go into raid uh, with this type of gear overall, because this is also not just PvP stuff, just mainly, because I know it just says, you know, 3 set plus 10 stamina. Usually when I see a lot of stamina-based stuff on gear, I always think it's mainly towards catered to the PvP. However, overall, it's still good stuff overall and good in PvE. You know, you're still stacking a lot of strength, a lot of agi, you're getting your 1%, you know, your rating overall. Um, and I love that a lot. I think that's awesome. And, it, and it's meant for many different classes, you know, from, you know, plate wearers to healing to shocking to, you know, holy, um, you know, warrior shamans, everything. And then you have your, you know, hunter shamans as well um, for more of the male gear. Uh, we also have what else down here we have even like for resto shamans too, you know, every spec is getting love when it comes to all these different types of variants of gear. And there's a lot of uh, opportunities for, depending on the play style or spec that you're going to go with, you can go with any piece of gear here to get the better ratings overall. I mean, look at this, for example, like a male boot that gives you 15% increased speed in Ghost Wolf form. That's kind of fucking nutty. And, you know, that's, and you could see like, oh, wow, that would be kind of juicy in PvP just in general. I know I'm looking at it from a PvP standpoint, but I, I mean, I, that's, I, I like to do PvP, all right? That's just me. All right. Um, but in leather, yeah, you know, you get your range attack power and chance to crit. Some really nice stuff here. Also, for leather, for rogues and druids, increase your effective stealth by level by one. We've talked about this stuff already yesterday. I don't want to go too deep into it. However, I will leave this link um, in particular in the comments below. Um, we'll just name it like Nightmare Incursion and PvP sets um, that everybody can basically look over and, you know, get yourself a little bit more familiar with the items that you want to maybe theory craft with. Maybe you want to be using uh, 60 upgrades. Sponsor me, by the way. Much love. And then you can go from there. Um, and there are a lot of opportunities and options to basically try many of these um, new things out. And I'm really excited about that. Now, as far as raid consumables go, um, like I was saying uh, earlier, I really feel like um, enchanters and, you know, alchemists, um, you know, herbalists, uh, a whole bunch of different professions overall, but these main, you know, ones that I'm mentioning, you're going to be making a lot of money this phase. Uh, I think this phase is really catered towards enchanting heavily and i think most phases mainly are in general of just wow right um because you know everybody always wants flasks everybody always wants consumables but i really think with these new consumables you're just going to be cranking out a fuck ton of more gold so let's talk about it so the new raid consumables of phase three of sod so for mojo of war increases ap by 48 chance on melee attack to grow in size which also then increases your strength by 35 so you're basically getting what, th 48 plus 30, that's 78, and then you're going to be getting 83 sh uh, sh uh, AP. Oh, sorry, you're going to be getting 48 attack power and 35 strength. So whatever that converts into the AP, do the math. However, it's going to be kind of fucking nuts is what I'm getting at. That's a really juicy melee range AP based uh, potion. Um, and I like that a lot, or consumable. I think that's kind of nuts. It's only good for in Sunken Temple, and it has a 15% uh, proc chance, a 40 second cooldown with a 3 second cooldown as well. Um, overall, though, Forbidden Magic, you get spell power by 40. Successful spell hits have a chance to unleash Shadow Bolt on a target. Only one type of potion can be active at a time with a proc chance of 25%, 40 second cooldown, 3 second cooldown. They all follow the same cooldown, so I don't even need to name that. And then you have a healing one of Mojo of Life, which is healing done by 45, mana regen by 11 mana per 5 seconds. And what is really cool about this one in particular that I like a lot is that your heals have a chance to restore 8 energy, 1% mana, or 4% rage. So let's say if you have a rogue tank, or if you have like, you know, a paladin tanking, or even a prot warrior which for rage for a warrior that is pretty solid and especially if the heals are just procking with a 25 percent proc chance uh healing done you know any you know heals that you do like either flash of lights or whatever you know um you know for you know resto druids if you're doing like uh uh what is it living seed or whatever it is or wild growth right if you're you know just proc in these and then they just consistently regenerate the resource of the tank that needs that specific resource especially for like a, a rogue tank or like a warrior because uh, you know paladin tanks really never are really running out of mana so this is really massively beneficial to i would say the rogues and uh rage based tanks in general 
um, and this is really nice. This is really cool stuff. And you know, more resource, the more you can use your abilities, your cooldowns, globals, etc. Right? Good stuff. For enchanters, why well, I believe you guys are going to be eating uh, 15 AP, nine healing done in damage, and 18 healing done by spells and effects overall from Serenity, from the Might, and from the Mojo. Uh, and shoulder enchantments now with the new shoulder-based, uh, you know, gear that you can get in this phase overall. It's really nice to see that shoulders are getting enchantment love, which is really dope. And it's also going to be great for a lot of people's pockets that are enchanters. You're going to be making an F ton of money for sure, 100%. Uh, also, in Alchemy, there's new Epic Flask, which seems to only have use within the Nightmare Incursions themselves. However, I can see a lot of people rocking these flasks if the Nightmare Incursions are hard. But hard, but not, like, overly difficult. Like, hard and fun, you know, but not difficult and boring. So, I can see people going with these because the damage done by spells and uh, up to 30 and healing done up to 45. And mana regen for 12 mana for 5 seconds for an hour. These are hour-based flasks, pretty much, and they're epic variants. Uh, range and melee attack power by 45 and then something called flask of nightmarish mojo which i'm not too familiar of but it is there it is in the game and we're gonna have experiments with this one right here for enchanting you're also going to be getting a sigil of living dreams empowering you to deal up to 30 increased damage and healing with spells and increasing ap by 30 for 30 minutes and then also close targeted fell portal may draw on one intention from the other side with the scroll of spatial mending which once again another fun based item not too sure if this mainly met just for nightmare incursions uh, but it seems like it is that this is something that you want to be using in nightmare incursions in general maybe it's for a quest line maybe it's for a profession thing who knows but seems interesting nonetheless for engineering now this is something i'm actually really excited about because i think uh, a lot of people didn't want to do warsong gulch to get to exalted which i understand i went through that grind that shit was fucking exhausting uh, i i know that pain however you now have a wrist option that is cloth, leather, or plate base that gives you specific types of values depending on the spec that you are playing. And it is an epic variant. And I think that is really sick because now people don't need to be forced to have to do a something they, that they don't want to do. And we all know what Warsong Gulch Pain is like, especially if you have, you know, people camping on top of the, you know, the, their bases for three hours. Never want to go through that again, for sure. Uh, blacksmithing, same thing. We have, uh, you know, new shoulder variants as well with different types of builds for the shoulder variants themselves for, you know, healing, shock it in, uh, just rat, you know, uh, straight up, you know, damaging overall, damaging base shoulders, strength, agility, stamina, really good stuff. Um, and I like it overall. I think also the one thing to pay attention to is something that the effect says. For the second effect for the equip, it says melees have a chance to increase your attack speed by 5% and AP by 50. However, though, this has no effect outside of areas under the influence of the Nightmare. So I think these are mainly based on if you're in the Nightmare itself, uh, in these Emerald Portals, which I'm assuming we're going to be spending a lot of time in them since they are epic variant shoulders. So it is incentivized in the fact that we're going to be in these things a lot. So I'm very curious to see what's going to happen overall. Uh, leatherworking has another, you know, base effect as well there's many of different uh leather working options for healing and damaging base sets uh tailoring has its own thing now as well for the shoulder pads and you know um to make these you know you would basically require specific types of material just like any of these pieces of gear which i'm going to showcase to you now which is the nightmare seeds which you would need about i'm assuming 10 around 10 to 15 of them overall but you can get a stack of 20 which is really nice and then you get the inner of mantle of nightmares which is something that you would get from the nightmare incursions as well now this is a part of video that we talk about these things and go a little bit more in depth into them so sit back and let's talk about it just a little bit nothing too crazy all right so good switch there editor i may pay you 15 an hour you want 20 25 401k settle the fuck down lock it in Un unbelievable however um yeah so i really am excited about these incursions i mean who knows what's gonna be in there right like i'm really curious if like what if you know because it's gonna be obviously horde and alliance both going in there is it hostile territories is specific spawns you have to farm is it gonna be a specific quest line that leads you within you know once you're in these portals or in these areas do they have a dungeon within themselves is there something that blizzard is not telling us is there like really strong elites in there is there maybe a potential open world boss in there that maybe alliance and horde 
sword both have to fight in order to kill you know who knows or whoever gets it first gets the tag first and then you know whoever wipes each other out first you know then that boss is going towards them and they get the rights to that boss within there who knows i have no idea what's happening i do know like they said there is rep based things in there like as obviously we talked about and obviously, you have to go in there in order to get the craftables for your epic shoulders, as we went over. But the sky is the limit when it comes to the potential of these, you know, nightmare incursions. I'm very excited to see what they have to offer. Um, and is there an option, which I'm very curious about, kind of like STV, where you can opt out of PvP and just do PvE in there for the PvE players only to keep it friendly to them as well, you know? Um, I'm not too sure, though. I'm really genuinely not too sure. I'm, I'm, I'm more curious than anything. And we're only, only a couple more days away, in fairness. And, you know, it's uh, a really exciting time to be playing Sod right now and prepping for this. I'm sure all you guys are going in there right now, currently probably prepping, mastering all your professions, leveling all your alts, trying to squeeze in another gnomer or two. I know it's very short notice, and I, I get that. You know, I'm grinding myself. I'm trying to basically sell fish all day long right now. I'm a fisherman. All right, and I'm cranking out greater sage fish like it's my job right now. Um, but overall, though, it is um, a really good time and really exciting. I want to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions, though, on what you think might be coming to the Nightmare Incursions. What is going to be so interesting to explore in there and the possibilities in there might be endless depending on how fun it is, right? Because it has to be fun overall. But I'm really excited to dive within that, go to STV, um, you know, raid with my friends and my guildmates and go from there and, um, you know, just have a good time. It's going to be a blast. I can't wait. So that's pretty much for the video, you know, today. I want to keep it, you know, simple. Keep it cash. I don't want to overstress it. Much love to you, amigos. Thank you for coming to the channel, as always. I think there's a possibility we might stream tonight. I know I said I was going to stream last night. I know I've been trying to stream on, you know, Twitch TV, Hello Jtello, on Wednesdays and then saturdays and sundays but i think when it comes to the when it, when the phase is out i'm gonna be streaming every night for sure but right now i might stream tonight there's that chance if not tomorrow night however visit around all right i'll be around all right much love get out of here now i gotta go eat some bagolgi little rice little ginger little sesame oil settle down i'll kiss you and then i'll spin on you never mind i won't do that i love you much love youtube family friendly come on settle down Lock it in, and as always, keep on keeping on. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.